Again, if you watch us online, just to let you know, if we don't start right at 11, we're, we're making sure we leave room for the Holy Spirit to move however he wants to move. And uh, so anyway, so anyway, if, if we start late, it's, uh, it's because of that. So just want to let you know. So just, I just am so grateful for what the Lord is doing, just the, the moving of the Spirit of God in our worship times. And anyway, we're going to get back into the indwelling life teaching. This is session 12, a strong spirit. It's uh, session 12, a strong spirit. And what I want to do is uh, I, I want to just start with a sharing a testimony, an email I received last week. It was very encouraging. And this uh, lady emailed me, and she had never heard of us before. And she said, about 10, 10 days ago, all of a sudden, I don't know how it all worked, but somehow our website showed up in one of her browser tabs. And she's like, who the heck are these? You know, I, I, she didn't, I'm putting, I'm paraphrasing. You know, if she's listening, sorry, you didn't say heck, but that's just me. But like uh, it's BKism, yeah, Brian Kesslerism. But anyway, she she said in this email, I, I was like, I have no idea. This this your website popped up into my browser, and I don't know how it came. I I closed it. But the next day, the the same thing happened, and I was like, okay, Lord, maybe maybe you're trying to get my attention. And so she began to research us, and you know, I, I liked her honesty. You know, I'm just trying to make sure you're not a cult and stuff like that. So thankfully, she didn't find anything negative about us. I guess that's one good thing about being not too well known is all the critics don't criticize you. So anyway, she she was starting to look, and she was like, I really appreciated how you know you're focused on missions and you're focused on discipleship and stuff like that. So I started to listen to one of your courses, and I started listening to the indwelling life teaching. Uh, just, just to, just to see what it's uh, about. And she said, long story short, I just, this is, she, she found us 10 days ago. I just finished lesson seven. So she's like moving really, really fast. The power in you of the indwelling spirit. She said last week, this is really encouraging. Last week has found my walk in faith completely transformed. <laughs> That's powerful. That's so, I just am so blessed by that. The Lord revealed to me that the mystery of Christ is not a metaphor or for some day. He is alive within me now, and I have amazing power through the Holy Spirit to truly live a transformed life. It's amazing. An abiding life. Um, I am 58 years old, and I have no idea why he chose this time to reveal his truth, but I'm very grateful. I'm truly stunned at the truth that has been revealed to me. I felt the same way. It's like, you know, like, Lord, why do you have to wait so long, so old, you know, to, you know, to, to, for these things to be revealed? You know, so if you're young, you know, get a hold of these things because they will transform your life if you can really get this. Uh, please be encouraged that, oh, let me see here. Um, anyway, so you know, she just gave me some personal encouragement. I'm going to share that. But anyway, I just want to say this. When I was writing in Dwelling Life, I felt like the Lord said that when we release this book in Africa to our pastors, we've got about 2,600 pastors in Africa who are going through the, uh, our, our distance learning program, our school. I felt like the Lord was speaking to my spirit. When you, when you release this class to the 2,600 pastors in Africa, it's going to bring to them personal revival. And I, it's much like what this lady said, that this, this, this things have just totally transformed my life. And I, I just had this real sense when I was writing that God's going to bring in personal transformation to these pastors. But the thing is, if a pastor is transformed, his church will be transformed. And so you're talking about 2,600 pastors in Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Malawi, the Congo, Zambia, South Africa, Zimbabwe. I'm not sure if I've left anyone out. but uh, and, and so 2,600 pastors times about 50. You know, the average church in Africa is about 50. That's over like 130,000 people that I believe God is going to bring revival to through this class. All right? And so, I, you know, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, we probably won't hear the full results until we're in heaven. But I, I just believe in faith that the God is going to bring a, a personal revival to those in Africa. And so that's where I want to encourage you is we, are, we, we have a goal. We're trying to raise $25,000 to get the Indwelling Life class uh, published, printed, translated in some different languages 
So these 2,600 pastors can get this class and experience the transformation that we have experienced, that this lady has experienced. And so I just want to invite you to give. If you haven't already given, I just want to encourage you to give. We're about 20% towards our goal. We've raised, raised about $5,000 or so. And so if you haven't given, I want to encourage you to seek the Lord about how much you can give, how much you can sow into this move of the Spirit. I believe there's going, I just believe there is going to be a move of the Holy Spirit through this class. How can you participate in that move of the Spirit? And so if you're in person and you want to give, you can give by check, by cash. You can also give online at give.lifeschoolinternational.org. That is give.lifeschoolinternational.org. There should be a link also in the description in our YouTube. Uh, but just want to encourage you to give, to, to be generous. We're sowing into missions. We're sowing into the Great Commission to see uh, pastors transformed and to see churches transformed. So anyway, I just wanted to start with that. So just want to encourage you, if you have not yet given, just want to encourage you to, to do that. So amen. So now let's go. Let's turn to... Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14, and want to read to you a, one of my very absolute favorite, I have about, again, 150 favorites, but one of my absolute favorite passages of Scripture. And Paul is talking here a, a prayer that I want to encourage you to pray every day, and if not every day, many times a week. But Paul is praying in, in verse 14 for the Ephesians. And he says, for this reason, I bow my knees before my father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name, verse 16, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man. I believe the inner man is talking about your human spirit that is one spirit with Jesus Christ. And Paul is saying that I'm praying for you that God, the Holy Spirit, who dwells on the inside of you, Christ in you, who is joined to you spirit to spirit, would transmit his power directly to your human spirit. Now notice what happens when that takes place. Paul said in verse 17, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Well, I thought Jesus already dwelled in my heart when I was born again. No, he dwells in your spirit. He must be released out of your spirit into your heart to dwell in fullness in your heart and then from in your heart into your soul and your body. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. What an incredible conditional prayer this is. Now, we'll talk about what it means for Christ to dwell in your heart by faith in another session. But number one, what happens when you pray for, a, for your spirit to be made strong, number one, what happens is Christ dwells in your heart by faith. It's conditional. It's not automatic. It hinges upon your spirit being strong. And then... Paul says the second thing that happens is when your spirit is strong is that you would be rooted and grounded in the love of God, verse 18, that you would be able to comprehend with all the saints the length, the height, the breadth, the width, the depth, to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge. So that's the second thing is that when your spirit is made strong, Christ dwells in your heart, number two, then you begin to know, and you, you can easily see in the context, it's not a head knowledge, but it is, it is an experiential knowledge. In other words, that you might experience the love of God that cannot be articulated by human words. The love of God cannot be explained in a teaching. The love of God must be experienced by the Spirit of God. And that, what hinges upon that is your spirit being made strong, and then I love, I love what it says here at the end. That you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. <clears throat> now, we talk, I talked last Sunday about the days of his presence, that so we're living in days of extraordinary outpouring of the Holy Spirit. That we are contending for God's presence in fullness, both among us, or not both, but uh, all three things, 
We're, we're contending for God's presence among us in fullness. We're contending for his anointing upon us in fullness. And we're contending for his spirit to be released within us in fullness. And this is what Paul is saying here, is that you may be filled up with all the fullness of God. See, you can be filled with all the fullness of God every single day. How incredible is that? I have not tapped into that fully. As you ask my wife and my daughter, they would say, yeah, amen. I, I, I've, you know, I know you, so I know you have not tapped into that fully. We have not tapped into that fully, but I believe we're living in the days when we are going to tap into this fully. Tap into the fullness of Christ being released out from the inner man. That you may be filled up with all the fullness of God. Now verse 20, I love verse 20. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly. This is beyond all that you could ask, think, or imagine. According to the power that is poured out upon you. Oh, wait, that's not what it says. It's according to the power that works within us. See, what I'm talking about today is not, I mean, yes, the end time outpouring of the Spirit will, will accelerate this, I believe, but this is not something that hinges upon a unique outpouring of the Spirit. This is about Christ dwelling in you. A power that is beyond anything you could ask, think, or imagine. According to the power that works mightily within you. Super abundant power. power mind blowing power that is already inside of you because Jesus Christ is in you. Now, this brings me to what we've been going through. For the past, and we're kind of in this part in this class where we're going through the, you know, different sessions about how to live the Spirit-led life. This is the third of ten sessions that look about principles, how to live the, the Spirit-led life. This third principle that we're going to examine is this, is the strongest part of your being, whether spirit, soul, or body, will be the part that influences, leads, and governs you. Thus, the importance of having a strong spirit. Very, very, very vital. The strongest part of your being is going to be the part that leads and governs your life. If your body is the strongest part of your being, if the lust in your body are the strongest part of your being, and you're obeying the lust in your body, you're going to be a carnal believer. If your soul is the strongest part of your being, overly analytical, overly emotional, overly independent and strong-willed, your soul is going to lead you, and you're going to be carnal or soulish. But if your spirit is the strongest part of your being, and your spirit has been strengthened by the power of God in you, and your spirit is the strongest part of your being, you are going to be a spiritual Christian. That discerns all things. That discerns the voice of God. That walks in communion with Christ. That overcomes the world, the flesh, and the devil. The utter importance of having a strong spirit. Very, very, very important. I think of it like this, like a smartphone. Every, probably, there's probably no one here that doesn't have a smartphone. Probably all have a smartphone, and you know it's incredibly convenient, although our minds are being shaped by the constant scrolling on social media, different subject, but we all have a smartphone, okay? You know there's four vital components in a smartphone. There's the phone itself. There are the apps that are installed on your phone. There's your connection to the internet, whether you're connected via Wi-Fi or by mobile. And there's also the very important thing we need, power. Because no matter how great a phone you have, no matter how great of apps you have, no matter how fast your internet connection is, 
If your phone is dead and has no power, your phone will not operate. And I think, I think of this, what I'm talking about here is your spirit is like a smartphone. The apps on your smartphone, the apps in your smartphone are like the functions of your spirit. We've talked about that. Your spirit has three functions. Uh, we talked about that intuition that you have that innate ability to know. You have that ability to know what God is saying in your spirit, that divine knowing. You have that ability to know that doesn't come by reasoning, that discernment. You have the ability to commune with Christ, spirit to spirit. And you have that ability, that conscience, that ability to know this is what God is saying. This is, what I, this is the area I need to walk in. This is the area I need to obey. This conviction, this is the place I need to surrender. Whatever it is, this conscience, these three functions of your spirit work only when, you're, when your phone has power. The, the connection to the, the, your spirit-to-spirit -spirit union, which connects you to Jesus and the Father in heaven, that is like... Uh, or, or that is like the Wi-Fi that connects you to the cloud. And then, but all of that it hinges on this one thing is if your, if your spirit has not been strengthened every day, maybe more than once, once a day, if your spirit has not been strengthened by the indwelling spirit's power, no matter how much you can be connected to God, no matter how much you can know him by your spirit, you have that ability, no matter how much you have that ability to connect with God, if your spirit is not strong, like a smartphone, you can't, you're, you're basically, you cannot function spiritually the way you need to function. In other words, we need, if we're going to live by the spirit, we need to be strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit. How vital is this? How vital is this? See, if your body is stronger, your flesh will rule. If your soul is stronger, self will rule. But if your spirit is the strongest, the spirit of God will rule, will govern your life. See, when your spirit is made the strongest part of your being by the Holy Spirit in prayer, then what happens is divine order begins to be established. See, a lot of us are a mess because we don't have divine order. The body is leading. The soul is leading, not the spirit. But what happens is when, you, when, when the spirit of God who dwells inside of you transmits his power to you, Spirit to spirit, what happens is divine order begins to take place of spirit first, soul second, and body third. Then you begin to live from the inside out instead of living from the outside in. And that's where, that's where this prayer from Paul comes in is this prayer is so vital. That's why I'm saying I want to encourage you, I want to encourage you to pray this prayer often, if not daily. I try to pray this prayer daily because it's vital. I know if I don't pray this prayer daily, if I don't wait on the Lord, and if my soul is stronger or my, my body is stronger, then I'm not going to live the spirit-led life. So when you, when you look at Ephesians and Paul talks about the, the strengthening that God wants to give you, that he, would, that he would strengthen you. He would strengthen you. Think about this. The God of all strength, the God of all power, strengthening you means to make strong, to empower, to increase in vigor, to be strengthened. This word, this word power in the Greek, we've talked about this, is dunamis, which means strength, power, and ability. It's inherent power. It's the power for performing miracles. It's the power for moral living and excellence of soul. And it's the power for ability. And this is the part I really like. This is the part that really resonates with me, is when the Spirit of God who dwells inside of you strengthens your spirit. And he releases to you power for ability... It enables you to live by the life of Jesus Christ. 
It gives you power to be who God has called you to be. It gives you power to do what God has called you to do. It gives you power to overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil. It gives you power to live the, by the life of Jesus Christ. This inward power of God, this inward strengthening of God enables you to live by his life. Because you cannot live by his life in your own strength. It takes God to live by his life, to live by his strength. The inward strengthening of God gives you the power, the power for ability to live the Christ-like life. Now, this is not the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Thankfully, we don't have to choose between the baptism of the Holy Spirit or living by the indwelling life of Christ. We can have both. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a power that comes upon you that gives you power for ministry, power to be a witness, power to prophesy, power to be bold, power to cast out demons and heal the sick and do miracles. It's a power that comes on you. What I'm talking about is a power that rises up within you that allows you and enables you to live by the life of Jesus Christ. You don't have to choose between one or the other. You can have both. But I'm setting this in context here that the inner man is that deepest part of your being. It's your human spirit. It's that place in you that God has made righteous. It's that place in you that God has made holy. It's that place in you that in the new birth, God has made like Jesus Christ. It's that place where you are connected spirit to spirit with the spirit of God. It's that place where you are a partaker of the divine nature. It is that part of you that has been made alive in salvation. You are no longer dead, but you are alive. It's that part of you that is one spirit with God. And what Paul is saying is, don't take that for granted. Pray daily, pray daily that that spirit, that spirit to spirit connection would be plugged into the, the, the cell phone, would be plugged into the outlet so you can be fully recharged every day. So you can be strong. See, what we're talking about this dunamis power, this dynamite power, you have this power in you because it's the power of Jesus Christ. And if you're born again, you have this power in you. You have him who is the power in you. You don't have to run here, there, and everywhere to get it. I'm not saying you don't go to places where God sends you. you where if God sends you places, if you want to go to places, go. But I'm saying, I want to give you confidence you don't have to go hear an apostle or a prophet speak to have this power. You have Christ in you. You have this power inside of you. You have this inherent power inside of you because the very same spirit who raised Jesus from the dead now is joined to your human spirit. The very same spirit who did miracles, the very same spirit who created the universe is now one spirit with your human spirit. And you need that power, that inward strengthening that God would give as you wait on him in prayer. Now, I just want to unpack for a minute how absolutely mighty this power is that's in you, okay? This is going to, if you really just get a revelation of this, if you get a revelation of this, it, it's mind-blowing, okay? It's mind-blowing. It's stunning, right? So just got to bring that word back in. Ephesians chapter 1, Paul is praying, and we've read this many times, but in Revelation, or Ephesians 1, 17, for a spirit of wisdom and revelation, I'm praying that your eyes are enlightened, verse 18, down, actually verse 19. Paul's praying that, is that you would have a revelation, or the Ephesians would have a revelation of the surpassing greatness of his power. Think about that. The surpassing greatness of his power. It's, it's a power you cannot comprehend with your natural mind. It is a mind-blowing power. Your mind cannot fully understand it. 
It's a surpassing power. It's the surpassing greatness of his power. Now, Paul says it's toward us who believe, but we just saw in Ephesians 3, that power is in us. So I, I like to just say it like this. I believe it's scripturally accurate. What is the surpassing greatness of his power in us and toward us who believe? Now, what does this power look like? What does this power that is in you look like? Look at, just keep reading. These are, or this is, I would say this is, this power, he's talking about this power is in accordance with the working of the strength of his might. Remember in Ephesians 3 we saw that God would strengthen you? Paul is telling us this is what the power is that works in you. Notice what he says. Verse 20. Which he, bought, which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead. That's dead raising power inside of you. Dead raising power inside of you. When he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places. That's victorious overcoming power inside of you. Whatever you're trying to overcome, Christ in you is the power of God that will enable you to overcome. 21, far above all rule, authority, power, and dominion, the power of Christ in you is far above every principality and power. The, the, the powers of darkness have nothing on the power of God. The power of God would absolutely terrify demons, and it does. You have that power in you. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. The power in you is greater than the devil and his attacks against you. Every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things in subjection under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church. That is the power of God in you. That is the power of God that works mightily within you. That is the power of God that is beyond anything you could ask, think, or imagine. See, you have, like, like uh, Peter said, you have everything you need for life and godliness. The problem is, the problem is, we don't believe it. That's our problem. It's my problem. See, God's power only operates by revelation and by faith. If you don't know the surpassing greatness of his power inside of you, if you don't know that, you'll never live by it. That's why Paul was praying, I'm praying for the Ephesians. I'm praying for you. I'm contending in prayer for you. That God would give you a spirit of wisdom and a spirit of revelation so that you would know, not here, but here in your heart, so you would know what is the surpassing greatness of his power. It takes revelation. It takes revelation. It takes the Lord opening the eyes of your heart. Hopefully this message is helping. Open the eyes of your heart to realize this power you have, every one of us have this, from the youngest to the oldest. You have this power. It's the power of Jesus Christ. It's him who is power. To tap into this power, to live fully in this power. See, a lot of us are living with no, we're trying to live the spirit-led life, and our, our cell phones are dead. Our spirits are dead because they're not being charged by the power of God. And a lot of times we don't even know that power, that surpassing greatness of his power that raised Jesus from the dead, that ascended him into heaven, that, sat, that seated him at the right hand of God and gave him the name above every name. That same power is inside of you. The question is, do you know it and do you believe it? Unbelief, doubt, will keep that power, his power, in you 
suppressed. And therefore, your flesh will live instead of your spirit. When you don't believe God's power is inside of you, when you doubt, when you don't believe, when you don't know, when you don't have faith, then no matter that that very power that raised Jesus from the dead, no matter that his, his power is in you, is inoperative, dormant, because God's power, like Paul said, <clears throat> this power operates in those who believe. Faith activates the power of Jesus Christ in you. See, if we're being defeated in our lives, it comes down to either not knowing by revelation the surpassing greatness of the power in you, or it means you don't believe it. Therefore, it's not God's problem. It's a you problem. It's a me problem. Is faith, this, his power only flows through you by faith. By faith, by believing, by believing what, what you know, the Lord has said. Faith is necessary for God's power to flow in you and to flow through you. Now, I, I'm talking about not necessarily in this message, though I believe it could apply, but I'm really focused on the power to live by the life of Jesus Christ. To live by his life. That's what I'm really focused on is that power for ability so that you can live just like he lived. We're meant to. We're meant to live by that same power. So I want to, again, I've said this many times, I want to encourage you to make this, this prayer a part of your life. Just waiting on the Lord, strengthen me. Lord, strengthen me by your miracle working power. You know, you would never start the day by walking out the door with a dead cell phone. But yet, you will start the day with a dead spirit, with an uncharged spirit. Even if you need to wake up earlier and wait on the Lord for him to charge your spirit. So that, the, so that your spirit can function, so that you can begin to know and hear his voice and commune with him and, and your conscience is awakened and it's sharp and it's alert. Go this way, go that way. Do this, don't do this. Just that your spirit can be sharpened. See, uh, Isaiah said that those who wait on the Lord will gain new strength. The older you get, the more you need the new strength. The older you get, the more you realize the Double shot of espresso is not cutting it like it used to. <laughs> the more you realize, God, I need this spiritual strength that comes from waiting on you. But, but Isaiah said, if you wait on the Lord, you will gain new strength. You will be like an eagle that will soar. You will soar with new perspective. You will soar into heights. You will be able to see things you've never been able to see. You will have the new strength to do whatever God has called you to do. We need that kind of strength every single day. See, no matter how challenging your circumstances are, whatever you're being challenged in, whether it's in a relationship, in a health crisis, and financially, in ministry, whatever it is, in spiritual warfare, if you will wait on the Lord, and you will pray, like I said in, the, in one of the last sessions, if you will pray until that, that shift comes, where you, where you feel that shift, that, that conscious shift where you have shifted out of the flesh, you've, you've shifted out of the soul, and you've shifted into the spirit. If you will wait on the Lord until that shift comes, it may take you 10 minutes, it may take you 15 minutes, it might take you 30, it may take you an hour some days. If you will wait on the Lord until that shift comes, you will live by the new strength of God. See, whatever you feed grows stronger. If you constantly feed your self-life, if you constantly feed your flesh, guess what? 
your flesh is going to grow stronger. If you're wondering, okay, why can't I overcome this battle? Why can't I overcome this issue I'm going through? Why, can't, why am I still struggling? Why am I still uh, stumbling? Why am I keep going in circles? A lot of times as you are feeding your flesh, and so your flesh has grown strong. And a lot of things you may be reaping right now are the, as a result of you feeding your flesh for like the last 10 or 15 years. You don't overcome. If you've been feeding your flesh for the last 10 or 15 years a constant diet of, of what self wants, this is what I want, the way I want it, and how I want it done. If you've been doing that for the last 10 to 15 years, you're not going to just be able to automatically walk in the spirit. Your flesh has grown strong, and it's stronger than your spirit. You've got to make a change in your life that I'm going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to spend time waiting on the Lord for Him to strengthen my spirit. It does, this doesn't happen automatically. That your, your spirit is all of a sudden, if you've been sowing to your flesh for the last 15 years, it's going to take some time for you to begin to sow to your spirit and to make your spirit stronger than your flesh. If you've been living 10 or 15 years where your mind is the predominant part of your leadership, where if, it, if it's, everything is about your opinions, everything is about your analytical mind, if it doesn't fit into your human reasoning, therefore it can't be God, you only do what the mind can reason and you want to make a change, you want to make a shift, well, you, you've been, you, your, your mind is so strong, it's going to take time. You've got to learn to feed your spirit and make your spirit stronger by sowing to the spirit, by praying, God, shift me, make my spirit stronger, make my spirit stronger than my body, stronger than my flesh. See, when your spirit is 15% charged, your flesh is 85% operative. If you only have a little bit of charge in your spirit, your flesh is going to rule and dominate you. But when your spirit is 100% charged, your flesh has no ability to govern your life, even though your flesh is still there, even though your flesh could still operate at any moment. But you're overcoming the natural tendencies of your flesh to do what you want to do and to sin and to deliver yourself. You're overcoming that because you have a greater power in you that is giving you strength to overcome. See, whatever you feed will grow stronger. I mean, just think about it. Just think about how much our soul and our body influence us. If you ever go on a fast, you realize, okay, after about an hour... You're like, I hate fasting. You know, it sounded great, you know, like before I started, but after an hour, you're like, this is terrible. I hate it, you know. And you start getting hangry, which, you know, means like grumpy and irritable because of a lack of food. And you realize, realize my goodness, my flesh is dominating me. And I'm sure I'm setting myself up for Angie to really pick on me and my dad too. So, but you really, you really realize when you fast how much the body controls you, Right? And how much you need the, the spirit to strengthen you. But, you know, the, the body and the soul are naturally strong. And if you've been sowing to the flesh, to the soul, for most of your life, you're not going to make that shift automatically overnight. You've got to learn to begin to sow to the spirit. Sow to the spirit. Feed your spirit. Galatians 6, 8 says that, the one who sows to the spirit, the, the one who, sorry, the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. A lot of the things that we're going through right now are not even because we're under attack from the devil. It's because we've spent the last decade sowing to our flesh. And we're now reaping a harvest that comes from the flesh. I'm not saying that to make us feel condemned. I'm saying if you want to make a change, learn to begin to sow to the Spirit. Begin to build up your spiritual life. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. See, what Paul's saying here is like you're going to reap, if you begin the daily practice of waiting on God, and you begin the daily practice of communing with him, of praying, God, strengthen my spirit, what begins to happen is that you are going to, over time, reap a harvest of life, his life, his 
eternal life, which is without beginning or without end, you're going to begin to reap a harvest of, of his life in you. And his life gives you the power to overcome. His life in you, see, eternal life is not somewhere you go. It's a person you know. And as you begin to sow to the Spirit, as you begin to sow to the Spirit, you are going to get to know God more and more and more and have a, a greater power that overcomes the flesh. So let me ask you, if you had to, you don't have to answer out loud, but if you had to say, okay, when it comes to the flesh, this particular area for me is my weakest point of the flesh. It could be jealousy. It could be lust. It could be uh, bitterness. It could be selfishness. It could be envy. It could be anger. It could be a million different things. But just think about it. what are the, the, the few things you struggle with that are, are like your struggle? What, what is it that you struggle with? The, you know, pride, selfish ambition, whatever it is, think about that. And so when I, the reason I want you to think about that is because there is a law of strength that this is what this whole session is about, that if, you're, if you struggle in those particular areas, then that means those areas are stronger than your spirit. And to me, this works like the natural laws of gravity and aerodynamics. If you throw a ball up, the law of gravity, every single time, is going to bring that ball right down to the ground. The only way to overcome the law of gravity, which is always true 100% of the time, is, is to use the law of aerodynamics, like an airplane going 500 miles an hour. The law of aerodynamics overcomes the law of gravity every single time. But if you turn the plane off midair, that plane is going to crash every single time because the law of gravity is in place. See, in your flesh is the law of sin and death. It's like the law of gravity. If you just live the way you have lived for the past 20, 30, 40 years, your whole life, that law of sin and death that is naturally operating in your body is like the law of gravity. You are eventually going to li live in sin and death, and the flesh is going to be stronger. If you want to overcome that law of sin and death that naturally operates in your body, you need a greater law to overcome the law of sin and death. You need the law of aerodynamics. You need the law that's greater than the law of gravity. You need the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. That law supersedes the law of sin and death. It's greater than the law of sin and death that has at work in your body. Is this making sense? Look at Romans 7, 23. Romans 7, 23, Paul said, I see a different law. He's not talking about here the law of Moses. He's not talking about the Torah. I see a different law. He's talking about the, the principles that work every single time, like the law of gravity. I see a different law in the members of my body. Waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin, which is in my members. That law of sin and death is still at work in every single Christian. For some, that law of sin and death has been weakened to the point that it no longer has a sway over you. But for others, that law of sin and death is working so strongly that it controls you. Two verses later in verse 25, Paul said that, so then on the one hand, I myself with my mind am serving the law of God, but on the other, with my flesh, the law of sin. See, notice that the law of sin worked in the members of Paul's body, and with his flesh, Paul served the law of sin. Now look at what Romans 8, 2 says. This greater law, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. This is like in our analogy. This is like the law of aerodynamics. It is a greater law than the law of sin and death. Paul says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free, has set you free from the law of sin and of death. 
See, there is this law of the Spirit. If you violate the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, one of those aspects of this law of the Spirit is having your spirit be strong. If you violate that, no matter how good you are and nice you are and no matter how good your intentions are, it is a, natu- it is a law that God has put into place. This law of sin and death in your members is going to overcome you. But if you want to overcome your flesh, whether it's lust, anger, bitterness, jealousy, envy, you must live by the law that supersedes the law of sin and death, and that is the, that is the law of the Spirit. And as it pertains to this message, it is the law of strength, that whatever is the strongest part of your being is going to be the part that controls you, leads you, and influences you. If you want to overcome your flesh, then you must have a strong spirit. Your spirit must be the strongest part of your being. That's why I say, pray until the shift comes. If it takes you 15 minutes, that's good. If it takes you 30 minutes, okay, press in. You know, there's this story of Elisha, and he's going, and the king of Aram comes and visits him, and, and he's like, okay, Lord, he's like, you know, Elisha is on his deathbed, but Elisha still prophesies over him. He says, king, take the arrows and begin to strike the ground. And so the king strikes the ground. I believe he strikes it about three times. I'm not, I, I think I have to go back and read it. Three times. But Elisha rebuked him and said, you should have struck the ground five or six times. In other words, it's kind of an odd thing. Okay, what does that mean? It's kind of this odd thing, but I think Elisha was really getting at, do you have the heart and determination to fully conquer the enemy? And this enemy I'm talking about is not the devil. I'm talking about you, (laughs) self-life. Do you have the determination? Do you have the inward strength? Do you have that inward resolve that I'm not going to strike the ground once or twice? I'm not going to pray some flimsy, weak prayer, God give me strength. I'm going to press in no matter how I feel. I'm going to get up earlier if necessary. I'm going to do whatever it takes to contend in the spirit until I break through into the Spirit of God. I'm not going to live in the flesh anymore. I'm not going to live in the soul, the self-life anymore. I am going to contend to press in to the Spirit of God, and I'm going to strike the ground five or six times until the shift comes, until I shift out of the flesh and into the Spirit. Because it's available to you every single day if you want it. See, I, I discovered this the hard way, and you probably have too, that if you miss prayer, not, it's not like God's mad at you and he's like, yeah, puts you under this, this sentence of shame and condemnation. It's more of what I'm talking about, this law that works. Is if I miss prayer one day, I can feel it. I think Martin, I'm trying to just quote this off the top of my head. I think it was Martin Luther, one of the great reformers. I think it was Martin Luther said, if I skip prayer one day, you know, I can feel it. If I skip prayer, I'm totally botching this, but it's a general paraphrase. If I skip two days, like my family can see, see it. But if I skip it like three days, all of Germany can feel it. <laughs> it's totally botched the, the quote, but it's something like that. But, you know, that's the way it is with us. If, if, we, if we miss prayer one day, we can feel it. If we miss prayer two days... Your family can feel it. If you miss it three days, everyone around you can begin to feel it. Because, again, this is not like a legalism or condemnation thing. This is more about the way these laws operate. Is we've got to contend to live in the Spirit. We've got to pray, God, strengthen my spirit with power that my spirit might overcome, that I might overcome this flesh in me that wants to rule and govern and live. See, what I've found is when you will get into the spirit, when you will make that shift from the flesh, a fleshly state, a carnal state to the spiritual state, when you will pray until the shift comes, 
whether it's prayer, worship, reading, however the Lord shifts you into the spirit, what I found is this, is that all life, all life forms have natural instincts. Bios, animal life, has a natural instinct. Suke, soul life, has innate natural instincts. Zoe, divine life, also has innate natural instincts. What I mean is this. When bio, consider bios life. I talk about my dog, Zeke. At 6 a.m., every, no matter what it is, I mean, it's like clockwork. I'll get up, and it's like 5.59, no stirring. But right at 6 a.m., it seems like, Zeke has this thing where he wants, whenever he wants something, he's a golden retriever, Whenever he wants something, he comes and he begins to scratch his paw on something. Maybe he scratches on furniture. We probably have like claw marks all over our house because he's hungry. He's like, feed me, feed me. So he scratches the door. He scratches furniture. He starts scratching me. And I look at my clock and it's like, yes, after 6 6 a.m., he wants to eat. This bios life in Zeke kicks in. I mean, not kicks in. He is an animal. So it's just his natural instinct, his innate desire to eat at 6 a.m., 6 p.m., not 5.59, 6 p.m. No, sometimes it is 5.59, but it's almost like clockwork. It's really crazy. 6 p.m., Zeke begins to want to eat again, so he starts scratching everything. That's bios life operating by natural instincts. Suke, soul life, is your self-life. When suke, soul life, is living, your natural instincts of suke, soul life, are going to kick in. You're going, to want, you're going to want what you want, when you want it, and how you want it. Your self-centeredness, self-nature is going to live. It's just inherent into this natural suke life. If self-life, soul life is living, those natural instincts of self-life, soul life are going to live. But when you begin, when you begin to strengthen your spirit... And that Zoe life of God that is connected to your spirit. God's Zoe life has instincts, has has a nature to it. It's the divine nature. It's his nature, which is the fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, uh, meekness, self-control. That nature begins to kick in, and without you even trying, just like Zeke, he doesn't even try, scratch, scratch at 6 a.m. It just naturally, innately happens. What happens is when your spirit is the strongest part of your being, naturally, organically, without you trying or making any effort, the natural instincts of Zoe life begins to flow out of you without you making any effort at all to be more loving, to be more joyful, to be more peaceful, to use more self-control. It's the natural, or I would say the supernatural life of God. Without you striving, but by abiding. See, the, the branch connected to the vine does not strive to produce fruit. The life of, the, life of the vine flows through the branch And fruit is naturally produced. See, when your spirit is the strongest part of your being, naturally what happens then is the life of Christ begins to flow out of you. The innate innate way God has designed your human spirit begins to work organically. You begin to be able to hear God. See, when your flesh is ruling, your spirit is dull. Your flesh, your your, your spirit is not sharp. Even though God may be speaking, you can't hear because the flesh is stronger and your spirit's dull. You cannot discern the faint whispers of God. But when your spirit is strong, and your spirit is the strongest part of, of you, that innate ability in your spirit to know what God is speaking, to recognize and to discern his voice begins to grow sharper and sharper and sharper so instantly you recognize the voice of God. But if your flesh is stronger, that whisper of God is undetectable because another, a greater strength is living. But when your spirit is strong, 
Whatever God is speaking, instantly you recognize it. Instantly you discern a situation. Instantly you know, okay, you know that you know, apart from reasoning, God is speaking in this way. God is directing in this way. You know that. You also begin to flow in this life of communion and fellowship like we talked about in the last session. You begin to have this communion with Christ and the fullness of God begins to fill you. You begin to instantly be more convicted. No, Lord, I, I, I can't do, I, or no, I can't go in this way. No, I can't do this. No, I can't go and, and participate in this. I can't do it. I can't be a part of this or that or that. Because your conscience is now being very sensitive to the indwelling Holy Spirit because your spirit is strong. See, sometimes when I talked about intuition, your spirit, that, your, that, that ability to, to know in your spirit what God is speaking, that sometimes people ask, well, how do you, you kind of grow in that? I'm unfamiliar with that terminology or I'm unfamiliar with that ability. How do you grow allowing your spirit to become more and more aware of God's voice. And I, I just, it's just really simple. It's really simple. Is you don't try to do that. You focus on what we've been talking about in this session. You focus on praying and praying and contending to, to get your spirit strong, for God to strengthen you with that inward might. And then what, what happens is, that instinct of your spirit, that innate ability of your spirit to know what God is speaking begins to operate organically without you trying. You see what I'm saying? It's effortless. It's, it's just, it's, it, the, the, it's easy. Now, the hard part is getting there. That's the hard part. That's where it requires work. That's where it requires striving, contending, praying, fasting, waiting, getting distractions out. That's the hard part. The easy part is once you make that shift and you're moved from the flesh to the spirit, the easy part is now it just begins to happen naturally, organically, by the nature of life. You're living now by Zoe life, and the natural instincts of Christ life begin to flow through you. And your spirit being strong recognizes then God is speaking this. God is speaking that. You see what I'm saying? And, and your, your ability to commune with him and fellowship him, with him are strengthened. Your spirit is sharper. And so as we bring this message to a close, I'm just going to encourage you, go for the fullness of God. <laughs> the fullness of God and, I, and I'm in context in this message, I'm not talking about the fullness of God related to the outpouring of the Spirit in the end times like I was in the last, last message, but uh, last week. I'm talking about the fullness of God in you. The fullness of God in you hinges, I want you to just see how vital this is, on whether or not he has strengthened you with power and might in the inward man, in the spirit. Because that's so vital, I just want to encourage you, exhort you, make this prayer in Ephesians 3, 14 through whatever, 20, 21, make it part of your regular, if not daily, prayer time. Amen. Lord, thank you. I just thank you. Lord, may we not live below what we can live, Lord. You have made everything pertaining to life and godliness available to us. The power of God that works mightily within us, Lord. Father, I'm asking you, Lord, right now, Father, that you would, I just want to pray this for everyone that would, is here, everyone that's listening to this message online or will listen to it online. Lord, I am asking you, just receive this, whether you're online or in person, just receive this. I'm praying this for myself as well. Lord, would you strengthen us? Lord, would you strengthen us with power and with might in our inner man? Lord, the very power of God 
that raised Jesus from the dead, the surpassing greatness of your power in us and toward us who believe, the power of God that is beyond anything we can ask, think, or imagine, no matter if we have self-confidence or not, sometimes it's better not to have any confidence that you rely on God, that power... Lord, would you strengthen everyone, Lord, who's listening to this with your inward power, your power for ability that we might live no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me. The power to live the Christ-like life as Christ in us lives rather than I, but we still live but by his life. Lord, would you strengthen our spirit? And would you bring our flesh under the dominion of our spirit? Lord, that there would be an inward release of life, Zoe life, the life of Jesus Christ, without beginning and without end, that he might fill our hearts by faith, and that we might be filled up with all the fullness of God. We pray that, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you.